Good morning, guys. We're carrying on with this uh, rating climb. Where are we? 1091. 1091 and opponents rated 1180. This might be the highest rated opponent we've had so far on the climb. Is that Belgium or Romania? Romania. Okay, we've got a Caro. Well, I'm going to play the only thing I know. I'm going to play the Von Hennig. And we'll see what happens. Hopefully it won't be too, too short, but we'll see. What I tend to find in the, the Von Hennig is that I've never come out really worse. I mean, there's, there's a, the standard defences here are for the knight to defend this pawn on e4 or for the bishop to come out and defend the pawn on e4. There we go, we have bishop, so I'm going to play f3. And here, if, the, if he takes the second pawn, I recapture with a knight. I mean, I do actually have the option of recapturing with a queen. But in this line, it's not so good as in like the Von Popiel Gambit because black's pushed c6, so you, you, you're not really targeting this pawn. In the Von Popiel against uh, like the Scandinavian, e4, e5, um, you play d4, they bring the knight out, and then you attack the knight with your bishop. So then they bring their bishop out as a second defender of the pawn which point f3 and if they take you've got this in natural fact the move queen e2 as well is good there. I think that's the, kind of the standard line in the Von Popiel I've got lots of games in the Von Popiel on my um, channel if you want to check it out but we are not in Von Popiel territory now I think I got it from Jonathan Schrantz the Von Popiel Gambit but it could be William Grafe as well. I mean, they're both like the Gambit gods, man. I just had the saltiest breakfast in the world, man. The dog's just finished it for me. Okay. So I'm going to capture with a knight. Now, so although he's captured two pawns, I've just recaptured one. So I'm one pawn down, but in return, I have all this. I've got both knights out on the board, right, for the cost of one pawn. And now he's moved his bishop again. So I'm thinking short castles here is cool. Or is there just, <laughs> is there a no-no my queen? Can we just don't know my queen? If he takes the queen, that's checkmate. You can't do that. So what are you going to do? You have to defend against mate. So I think just like in uh, like the main line here. So normally, because he, he's wasted he's wasted time. You see, with uh, moving the bishop twice. That's the point. So he's come here to. I don't know what did he do. So bishop f5 first and then bishop g4 to pin the knight. You can actually pre even pre-move this. Now this is bad because he actually loses the bishop. This is also bad because queen takes. Because it does, it does defend f7. But you simply again lose the bishop. Even if the knight's out here, and in the normal line, they go there, queen takes, knight can't take, because the knight doesn't defend f7, and then that's checkmate. That's pretty horrible. So, assuming this game doesn't go on for too long, we might have to do another one today, guys. Dorinta 89, a mere child. And he's having a jolly good thing, though, isn't he? 
So what, what are his options? I, I, this is the only the only viable move, I think. So if he doesn't move or protect the bishop, he's going to lose the bishop. He's going to be a piece down. Therefore, so he, and he can't protect the bishop with another piece, for example, that, because he gets checkmated. Therefore, he must move the bishop, I think, and that is the only square to which he can move the bishop. Right? After which, what happens is we trade. He gets doubled and isolated e-pawns. I'm going to castle, and I'm just going to throw the kitchen sink at him. Yes, um, I'm still going to be a pawn down. But his king is going to be stuck on this e-file with two pawns in front of him. And uh, I'm just going to try and line up my rooks and, and squeeze squeeze him to death. Wow. He's having a right good think. I've actually got 31 seconds more than I started with in this, this game. Okay, he's found it. Well done, well done, well done. Okay, so what's going to happen here is I think we take F takes castles. We've got an open F file. I may not castle immediately. Let's see. I may actually have a check here with the queen. Then G6, though. I have queen F3, threatening to come in here with mate. Uh, knight H6 doesn't work because bishop takes. So I'm definitely fond of this idea. It seems to hang this pawn, but don't matter if you checkmate your opponent. You know what I'm saying? This... Alright, so what's he going to do? Knight there doesn't work. This is probably... This is the move we're going to get. That's the move we're going to get. So, is there any point then in Queen F3, Knight F6? Hanging this pawn? Well, no. So I'm going to castle. Pawn is still defended. His king is now starting to feel the danger. Because he's got a queen on the d-file, which is semi-open. A rook on the completely open f-file. Mm-mm. That's not good. So if I play my queen out here, for example, plays knight f6, I can't go to either of these squares because the knight patrols them both. So, principles then. I'm inclined to play, I mean, that's my first instinct. Why is that my first instinct? Well, there is some thought behind it. Okay, here, here, I don't really want to trade queens. Um... But if he did, let's see my bishop's out in the board, right? I've connected my rooks, I've completed development. Move nine. Not bad. Ish. Okay, so bishop out here. If he takes, I have the option of takes with bishop. And that's an outpost of the bishop. It also blocks these pawns. In fact, I can't see anything wrong with that move, so I'm going to play it anyway and then explain. Um... Now if he takes, you see, I've got, I've got the option of bishop takes, which avoids... So if, if he takes, pawn takes, he could trade queens. But then I just activate my rook to the newly opened d-file. So we, then we've got a completely open d-file and a completely open f-file. Right, with the king stuck on e behind two pawns. All I need to do is give check, you know. So this is interesting. This is very interesting. I am inclined to take with the bishop, not only just because it opens up the rook on, on there, right? Um, but if I take here with a pawn, his knight can't go there. His bishop's in a world of hurt. But what's going to become of my bishop? This is the question. Yes, I'm going to take the knight. Obviously, I'm going to take the knight. I'm leaning towards bishop takes. Open up the f-file. This, even if this, I, mean, I can come after this pawn. I can even put my queen on here, maybe. If takes, takes and takes. No, I'm, I'm taking with the bishop. 
Can't fully explain why. Oh, that's quite nice. Look at these. Both pawns undefended. After knight, knight e4, knight c5. Look, black's still up in material. All right, so for anyone who's thinking, oh, being up in material is what it's all about, is where it's at. No, it ain't. Right, my hunch here, again, is to play queen e2. This pawn is now defended by the bishop, so queen takes pawn isn't even a thing. Queen e2 gives me the option maybe of knight here, but more importantly, he prepares rook a to d1, which I think is muy importante. And that's, that's a bad bishop. Rooks are pretty bad, right? Look at this rook. It's got one square it can go to. This rook has the luxury of two, two squares, but neither of which is a fine square for a rook, right? So we can, we can count those rooks as bad. This bishop is bad, right? This pawn ain't going nowhere, right? So this only way out into the board is going to be this away. So what's he going to do? Is he really going to start moving his g-pawn? And this is a prime example, I would say, of a situation where material is immaterial. It's nothing to do with the material guy. And as soon as this bishop moves, by the way, I have a discovered attack by the queen on the e6 pawn. But I think I'd be a fool not to play rook ad1. Do you want a castle? Do you? If I was to take here, he's going to take, right? There's nothing. Queen's defending this now, by the way. I think he's trying to castle. I do. And I would love to prevent that. See, so he's going through these two squares. There's no way I can put control over those two squares, is there? Need to find a way to put pressure on Black's position. Knight here maybe just takes, yeah? If he castles, he's going to have a rook on d8. And then I'm not sure about this option. Do we just pressurize here now? I don't know. King, if the king's there, then no one's defending this pawn, isn't it? Hmm. I think it, it has got to be his idea. Now this just doesn't make any sense at all. I've got a lovely bishop. It's plugged up my opponent's position. Maybe I should have taken with the pawn rather than the bishop because I've kept the defile closed, giving him kind of scope. I don't know where the pawn takes would have been any better, but pawn takes, then we've got a queen trade off. There's no castling as things stand. Even if he does that, then maybe maybe that was just, I, might, I misinterpreted what was critical here. And that actually opening up the defile was more important. Okay, but... I'm going to play rook ad1 anyway. I'm expecting long castles, and I'm not delighted about it. Because that's the thing, you know, I've gained this like positional crushing advantage, and then allowed my opponent to dissolve it away. Now I do, on the other hand, have, if we have opposite side castling, I've got Three pawns on the queen, queen side. That what the? What the? Okay, if knight takes here, takes. I'm not entirely unhappy. 
But the first thing I notice is that now Queen H5 check is playable. And the point is, they know we're blocking it other than G6. And if G6, it hangs the rook. Yes, my queen will be on prees, okay? So if I do this in G6, yes, his rook's hanging, which is good by short castles. What's my queen going to do there? So the, the, my queen will retreat somewhere. His rook's going to go to g8. Right? Is there any advantage gained whatsoever from that? Or do I try and slot my knight in here? No, I can't go there, can I? That's annoying. I mean, it's not a bad general. Oh, I've got that, though. So he's here, here. I have to move my queen. Then he has to move his rook. So there's no real tempo gain there. So I'm kind of going back to this idea of knight e4. And that's what we're playing. Knight e4 might come in here, hit the queen, also hit the, the, the b7 pawn. Got nice control here. This bishop's doing a fine job controlling squares in my opponent's half of the board. My knight is controlling squares in my opponent's half of the board. My queen is also controlling squares in my opponent's half of the board. My, on the other hand, my opponent has only got this knight. And that knight is probably going to be made to feel unwelcome very soon, put it that way. He can't, he can't go here because bishop takes. It's if I kick him. Hey. Oh, hang on, if I kick him with c4, he can go here, but then I kick him again. I think he's going to make his situation worse by having to go back to a6. Interesting game. I, th I, I do feel like it, it kind of pivots on this, this recapture of the, on there. Yeah, should I have taken with pawn? Should I have taken with bishop? I'd like to see what the uh, engine says about that. Okay, there we have the castles. Okay, so now the queen check isn't on. Um, I want to explore this move first. Now notice the, the king now defends b7. Right, but here the queen can't go there or there. So in fact this forces the queen back to there. And then, does this pawn not hang? Knight here. You go there. Knight takes here, hitting the rook and the bishop. And maybe then even threatening to come in here. I mean, that's got to be done, isn't it? Got to be done. I'd be able to come in here with my queen also, but also note the king has no squares. So the f if you notice that, you say, well, is there a way to deliver check? I don't know. Now he's thinking again. I'm, I'm pleased with these knight moves, though. See, a lot of people here would have just, like, traded off. But if I'd have taken there, he repairs his pawns. He has pretty good pawn center. This guy might be slightly backwards, but then he gets the castle and play on. And he's still a pawn up. Okay, there goes the queen. So my thought is this. That hits the rook. Rook can't go there. So he's going to have to place rook here, right? Uh, 
There is one possibility, which is to drop my bishop in first and then the queen for checkmate. But in actual fact, with the knight where it is right now, the, the rook's about to go to d7, so forget that. Well, I was about to say there. Yes, I could drop my queen in here with mate, but... Okay, so we know, we know rook, <coughs> rook d7's on its way. I could eliminate this bishop, but I don't want to, because it's crap. Don't trade a good piece for a bad piece. This piece, on the sixth rank... Well, yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Uh, surely McLean. I mean, seriously, there? I mean, there's no checkmate threat, right? Because he haven't got enough stuff. So where's this knight going to come? Here, here? I just take it out. You're not planning a queen sack. You're not taking it. What? No. Just no. Wow. Okay, now now I'm um, in the lead. I am. My first thought is to drop the bishop back. I'm plus two right now. I have a safer king. Uh, so here's what I'm seeing as well. If if my bishop drops back down here. That vacates e5 for my queen. That then makes this possible, forcing the king up, winning a pawn, at the least. Also, it's just making sure I defend this, and it's putting the bishop on a square where it's defended by a pawn rather than defended by a queen. Having said that, to be fair, it is defended by a pawn right now. So let's revisit the idea of pawn to c4. Knight goes here, gets taken. Knight goes here, gets taken. Knight goes here, probably gets taken as well, I don't know. Knight goes here, get, gets taken by the B-pawn. So here, he's got to go there, or he's got to go there, or there, really. And this has to be a good thing. Because what I'm doing is I'm pushing these pawns up together. What I would love to do is to find a way for Dave to sacrifice his little life for the, for the, uh, the greater good. Dave, the D-pawn. You can't do this and you can't do that. You can't go there. This, I'm not sure that, you see. And he can go on to A2 if he wants, but he'd be mad. <laughs> Maybe threatening to come back with a fork here, but I'll just push this pawn A and covers that square. And threatening to capture on, on there as well. So I've been completely saturating myself with reaction videos of people reacting reacting to um, Rich Men North of Richmond. And if you haven't heard the song, check it out. Oliver Anthony. Um, come from absolutely nowhere. And okay, he has knight here actually defended by the queen. Um, incredible song. Right, like anthem for our times. Okay, so, I mean, I tickle him with this, he comes here. So what? I'm not giving up a pawn for zero benefit whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, you know, arguably we can maybe use the open A file, but... So he comes here, it's like, well, now what? You know, you've actually trapped your knight, haven't you? I just probably push on with my campaign of destruction. Also, this knight is actually under attack on Pries and defended only by the queen. And one thing that Naroditsky says very frequently about the queen is that she is a bad defender. Why is she a bad defender? She's a bad defender because she can very easily be bullied out. So I could do this, for example, and force the queens off the board. I don't see any reason to do that right now because it's not like my opponent's queen is really that evil. 
Um, this bishop hasn't come to life yet, nor is this rook. So my opponent's really only playing with a handful of pieces. My, my, my hunch is to push d5. Because when your opponent's king is in the center, when you've got a rook lined up against it, it's a semi-open file. Like, duh. This is also still quite cool, this idea. If I do this and he pushes. If I do this and he takes, I've got rook takes. And that's got to lead to some carnage. Uh, here he pushes. Here he pushes again. Yeah, no. I'm going to play this move. Just opening things up. And this idea. This idea is actually a bit more, I think, more challenging than the d-pawn pushing up. Because he is not obliged to capture this pawn. Or to allow me... Now he is. Now this is different. Now it's a fork. Okay. This is the issue. Takes, 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 boom. Right. That, I think was not the best move, and I'm going to try and show why now. I'm attacking two pawns. Previously, before that, if, if I do this, he just pushes. I do this, he just pushes. And then he ends up with like a human shield. He, his king can almost hide behind that, right? And I decided that Dave's prospects there were not good. This completely changes it because it's now a fork. I'm attacking two pawns at once, and he can't just ignore it. Because whatever happens, I'm taken. All right? Now, if pawn takes, ouch. And that comes with check. And my queen's guarding the open e-file. Therefore, what's going to happen? I mean, bishop blocks, no, it doesn't work because I've got rook and bishop on it. See? And I'm plus two materials. He throws in a check. I don't see any argument for that. But it's nice to see the bishops uh, decided to join in. Okay, am I worried about knight forks? No, I'm not. Nah. This is all good. And I'm threatening to take there with a discovered check. Threatening then to capture on b7. And look at where my major pieces are, man. Look at this. That's attack formation. Ghost. Come here then. I know. You need to see this finish. Okay. All right. We have a counterattack. Well, well, well. Now, I could actually up the danger levels here. Bishop h4, check. Aim. But I'm thinking just something like this, even just say, okay, I'll, I'll have the queen. You want to trade queens? You want to do it? Get the queens off the board? I mean, I'm in a better position. I'm also up on the clock by two minutes. Um, I can't go here or here, so none of these is on. Okay. I don't really want to walk into the path of the bishop either. I'd like to attack the bishop because it's currently undefended. If I give check here, he ain't going to block. Let's say his king goes like here. What have I got? I haven't got that. I've got no more checks. Is it? Not a lot of point to all of this. So, um, is there anything better than that? Not that I can see. But I am up an exchange. Pawns are kind of equal now. He's, he's eradicated his real problem pawns, but he has lost material in the process. If he takes here, he's got an isolated pawn in the middle. Ain't the end of the world. I would like to take, and... Okay, he's taken, that's fine. Okay. This feels like it should benefit me somehow. I'll drop the bishop back, target this. The pawn's undefended behind the knight, if I can encourage the knight to move. I also have this, maybe attacking the knight. 
I have this attack in the night if I want it. I still have this trickety doodah. Um, I don't know, I kind of like in this though. Moves the knight, I trade off. And you can't move that knight and attack any of these things. Why? Look, his knight's on a dark square. Wherever it moves, it's moving to a light square, thereby only attacking dark squares. All my stuff is on light squares. What colour is his bishop on? Dark square. And that is fixed. So here I'm just threatening to win the knight. If you defend with a queen, I'll probably just take it out anyway. And maybe that's not the best square because you walk into a discovery by the rook as well. So then if this you have to take with a queen, then I might... There's more discovery ideas then, even. Two and a half minutes now, this guy. He's... he's um. He's fought though, he's fought, fought well. Yeah, so I lost that pawn back. So now up, I'm up in exchange, but he's got one extra pawn, which you never know. He's up to the fourth rank, it, his fourth rank. It could play a role. Later on in the game, I can, I can pre-move the recapture anyway, even. I don't think he's going to go for it. He, he probably shouldn't go for it. But I'm loving the activity of my rooks. And that idea of kind of rooks on open files is really the, the theme of the game. Sasha. It's down to minute 36 now. It's th three minutes behind on the clock. Not ideal. So if he moves the knight, he can move the knight to a couple of squares. Here or here, defending the bishop. All oh, right. Okay, so he's defending. <laughs> so if I take, no, 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 that doesn't work. You had to move the knight. I've got three attackers, three attackers, two defenders. Am I wrong? You take. I take. You're going to be down a whole rook at the end of this, brother. And that is not a happy situation. How? How did you spend 2 minutes 19 and screw that up? Guy's 11.80 rated. I mean, this is literally fingers and thumb... Okay, and you lose your queen and that's it. That's the end of the game. Weird. That was weird ending. But quite happy with it. Let's have a look on the old analysis board. Okay, here we go. Let's add it in. What are we going to get accuracy-wise? I'm going to expect. I'm expecting 70s minimum, 70s or 80s for me, hopefully. Um, but I would be interested to know if there's okay, 78. That's not bad. And guess the Elo 1700. Okay, 1400 from Black though. Okay, so what have I got? I've got one miss. Well, that would be interesting. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't like it doesn't like the von Hennig, but there you go. Were you on G four then? No, G four. I might need to look in that line. Wow, G four. I mean, it wins the tempo, and it's which is very much in the spirit of the opening, and that's a mistake. Yeah. It misses an opportunity to play a hard to find move. I know. So the the, the hard to find move is, is bishop takes f7, right? Okay. Because then king takes. But I went for the oh no, my queen option. Right. So when the king moves, now you, you're going to win the bishop back. Um, so 
So this is plus two and a half. I could have had plus 3.76, okay? But anyway, so he finds the best move and we go down this line. Okay, castles, queen g4 here. Saying, hold your horses. Queen g4, threatening what? Queen g4, or queen h5 check, and then castles comes in. Odd, that's an odd move. Hard one to explain that, it really is. Anyway, so I castle, and we're better. There's no question we're better. That's a mistake, and that's my miss. Oh, you, oh, you monkey. Knight f7, forking queen and rook, defended by my rook. Yeah, you're quite right, that was absolutely a miss. Absolutely. And what the, what was I concerned with here? Getting my bishop out on the board. And I missed the tactic. Okay, so we're plus three still. I mean, it's, it's a winning kind of position. Queen e2, happy with that. Good. Didn't like that, wants me to go in with a knight. Mistake. Okay, knight e4. Now I said these, these knight moves I was, I was very pleased with. And that's excellent. With c4 to come now, c4 does come. I take the pawn, again c4. And this is good, take the rook. And now c4. And it is just, it's just winning now. So yeah, quite happy with that. But I might need to look into this, this idea. G4 here, might need to check that out. There might be tricks and traps and fun and games to be had in there, but I will look at that separately. But I will, I'll link to my Von Hennig um, study in the description. But uh, good win, I thought. Very enjoyable. And quite honestly, why would a chap ever want to give up the, the knowledge that I've managed to scratch together in, in these openings? I don't know. I don't know. You never know. Might stick with the old E4 yet. Uh, rather than the, uh, the English. We'll see. We'll see. But it's a game and it's all fun. I'm enjoying myself. Hope you've enjoyed yourself as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.